The DCS Lena system sounds so clean, so natural, so resolving, so transparent. Hey, what's happening to me? Before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our content on the latest and greatest audiophile gear. And click the cute little bell to be notified when we post new content. Now, are you interested in learning about a system that will have you scrambling to listen to every piece of music you've ever loved so that you can love it even more? One that sounds so lifelike you might wonder if there are little people inside singing to you on demand? One that will make you want to test it with every headphone you can get your hands on? I thought you might be. Behold the DCS Lena, which was designed specifically for the high-end headphone customer. The new Lena headphone system comprises three units, a headphone amplifier, a network streaming DAC, and a master clock. You can purchase the pieces together or individually. Together, they'll run you just under 30,000. The Lena is a modular design, and you can set the pieces side by side or stack them, hence the name Lena Stack. I suppose if you like asymmetry, you can do a two-in-one scenario. If you do stack them, DCS recommends the headphone amp on the bottom and the DAC on the top. Now, a few months ago, I reviewed the single chassis Bartok, which was DCS's first product to include a headphone amp. Well, the headphone amp was optional. The Bartok was designed first and foremost to be a preamp DAC. What the Lena does is it takes the DAC and the headphone amp from the Bartok, improves the headphone amp, and then adds a master clock. You will note that the Lena doesn't have a preamp stage. If you own the Bartok without the headphone amp and now you want one, you could totally buy the Lena headphone amp and use it with the Bartok. In our last video, Moon Audio founder Drew Baird offered a first look at the Lena, and he'll be back in another video with an inside look, literally, at the three Lena components. In this video, I'll offer my review of the Lena. So this is the network streaming DAC with built-in upsampler. It features DCS's first touchscreen interface. This is a nice feature. I love clicky buttons, but the touch screen is satisfying. Now, you don't actually have to use the touch screen. You can use the DCS Mosaic app on your phone or tablet if you'd prefer. So here's what you're going to see when you look at the display. On the top right, you've got your status icons. These are going to indicate your filter setting, DSD or PCM, clocking sync mode, and your phase. On the top left, you've got your input source, and under that is your data rate. Then you've got your track title. This is only going to be displayed when streaming from network or USB 2. You've also got your play and pause button and your elapsed time. Again, that's only going to display when streaming from network or USB 2. Then here are your menu settings and shortcuts. To select these, you touch the corresponding touch button underneath. Your brain might tell you to tap the icons directly. It takes a little getting used to. So these four icons at the bottom are used for selecting your input source, turning on the crossfeed, aka DCS Expanse, toggling between the two versions of Expanse, and accessing your settings. The back of the unit features a variety of analog outputs and digital inputs. So here's a feature we didn't cover in our last video, and that's the test feature. So this is where you can do your channel check as well as your burn-in. Now, DCS takes a ground-up approach with their DACs. We've got a lot of info on their patented ring DAC technology in our written review, which is linked below. So I'm not gonna get into too much detail here. In very simple terms, DCS was looking for a way to reduce errors that lead to distortion in other types of DACs, notably ladder DACs. What this means in listening terms is that more fine detail can be resolved and heard in the audio with the ring DAC. Now, a big reason why DCS does not use off-the-shelf DAC chips is so that their DACs can be updated as new platforms and formats emerge. 
DCS uses an FPGA platform. Because these can be reprogrammed and updated remotely, new features, functions, and enhancements can be added over time via software updates, which essentially increases the lifespan of the DAC. Now, I mentioned DCS Expanse before. Expanse is a cross-feed processing algorithm that was developed by DCS. Crossfeed is the process of blending left and right channels of a stereo audio recording to help make the audio sound more natural when you listen to it through headphones. What DCS wanted to do with Expanse was to bring the headphone listening experience closer to the sound that artists and engineers hear when listening to a performance mix in the studio. Expanse uses a multi-stage processing method to optimize audio while preserving the reverberation in a recording, which is crucial to helping us localize sounds and establish a sense of space and depth. Accessed via two optional settings, Expanse can provide a heightened sense of realism when listening to a wide range of stereo recordings. So I'm just gonna give you a little snippet from the DCS website because I think they explain it really well. After studying existing methods of crossfeed and headphone optimization, we discovered that none of them was able to optimize sound while also preserving the original reverb in a recording. Most instead relied on adding artificial reverb, a technique we didn't feel was appropriate for DCS products. Expanse replicates the effects of stereo listening, where sound is projected into the room around you rather than inside of your head, without damaging or altering reverb or affecting a system's performance. This is achieved through widening audio signals prior to the crossfeed phase. Expanse also delays the delivery of crossfeed signals to recreate the effect of left and right audio signals arriving at our ears at different times. Together, these methods help to bring the headphone experience closer to loudspeaker monitoring while preserving the unique sound and character of a system and a listener's own headphones. Because the effects of headphone optimization are dependent on how a recording is mixed or produced, Expanse isn't suitable for all types of music, but when it is used with the right track, it can provide a heightened sense of space and depth and a more natural and immersive soundscape. So here is the Lena headphone amp, which is DCS's first standalone amplifier. It's a fully balanced, solid state design. Their goal with this amp was for it to have the most transparent sound possible with no coloration. They want the amp to honor the character of whatever headphones you're using. The Lena headphone amp was specifically designed to provide the appropriate amount of voltage and current to a range of headphones. This is achieved through an ultra low output impedance of less than 0.090 ohms, low noise floor, wide dynamic range, and an adjustable gain switch that eliminates the risk of hiss when listening to high sensitivity headphones or IEMs. So here on the front panel, you've got your four headphone outputs, dual three pin balanced XLR right and left channel, four pin balanced XLR and a quarter inch jack. There is a status indicator light here and the volume control knob, which is pretty large. It's nearly three inches across. The adjustable gain switch that I mentioned before is on the underside of the unit here beneath the volume knob. And you've also got your power and input button down there as well. The rear panel of the amp features several analog inputs, a pair of unbalanced RCAs, a pair of unbuffered balanced XLRs, and a pair of buffered balanced XLRs. So to change the source input, you press the power input button on the front underside of the unit and the status indicator color will show the current input. So right now we're on white, that's balanced XLR. This is what's recommended when connecting the unit to the Lena DAC. Um, blue is gonna be your buffered balanced XLR and magenta is your unbalanced RCA. Now the buffered input has a higher input impedance. So if the source device does not have as much oomph, so to speak, this will be the input to use. The unbuffered inputs have a lower input impedance. So they're higher quality, but harder to drive. When using the Lena headphone amp with a DCS DAC, you wanna use an unbuffered input, preferably balanced. 
The Lena Master Clock allows the DAC to be locked to a single master signal for enhanced audio performance. Now, you may wonder, why would I need an external clock? Doesn't the Lena DAC already have a clock? It does. Every DAC contains a clock, but adding an external master clock to your system can result in significant sonic improvements. According to DCS, keeping the signal clock away from the rest of the playback chain circuitry and inside its own chassis significantly lowers the amount of signal jitter arriving at the ring DAC. Subjective listening tests have shown improved imaging, resolution, dynamic expression, and localization, plus a greater sense of rhythmic movement and flow when you use a master clock. It minimizes the risk of jitter and timing irregularities that can affect playback. Now, the clock features a minimalistic design. The front panel is bare except for the status indicator light at the bottom. The light is a dim white when the unit is in sleep mode and bright white when the unit is on. The clock has dual crystal oscillators, one for 44.1 and one for 48 kilohertz sample rates. There are two word clock outputs on the rear panel corresponding with these sample rates. So Mosaic Control is an app for your iOS or Android mobile device. You can use Mosaic to manage settings and configuration for the Lena and to control music playback. Mosaic will take your audio from multiple sources and put it into a single interface. Mosaic is compatible with UPnP, USB, internet radio, Tidal, Cobuzz, which I have called up right now, Deezer, Spotify via the Spotify Connect app, and you can even listen to podcasts via Arable. The Lena DAC is also Rune ready, so you do have the option of using Rune to stream through Tidal and Cobuzz. If you want a more straightforward approach, you'll do just fine with Mosaic. If you want all of the bells and whistles that come with Rune for a monthly fee, then by all means use that for streaming Tidal and Cobuzz. For the majority of my listening sessions with the Lena, I used either the Focal Stelia or the Hi-Fi Man Susfara headphones, both with a Black Dragon premium cable. If you're familiar with the Susfara, you know that it is a power-hungry planar magnetic headphone. I wasn't sure the Lena would be able to drive it, but I needn't have worried. By switching the headphone amp into high gain mode and changing the line out in the DAC from two volts to six volts, the Lena drove the Susfara with ease. Now, when you listen to music, you want to hear everything from the original recording, correct? Of course, you don't know what you don't know, but Really, that is the goal of audiophilia, and that moment of discovery of previously unheard micro details is just delicious. Of course, you also want your music to sound good, whatever good means to you. If good to you means astonishingly clear, natural, lively, and detailed, then the Lena is going to appeal to you. It most certainly appeals to me. There's a quality to the Lena's sound that I almost struggle to describe. It's eerily transparent, but incredibly lively and musical. Layers inside of layers inside of layers of music. The Lena has amazing dynamic range and an expansive sound stage, and the sound is just so crisp and tonally neutral. Listening to the Red Hot Chili Peppers classic Under the Bridge with the Hi-Fi Man Susvara, the many elements in the song unite for a powerful presentation. The bass has a richly defined, sonorous quality. Drumsticks hit cymbals with incredible crispness and sizzle. And Anthony Kiedis' voice is so very present with super pronounced diction and mouth sounds, which I love. Crosby, Stills & Nash's 49 Bye Byes, also on the Susfara, sounded intoxicating. I was discerning the backing vocals more than ever. Such crisp, melodic, and well-defined harmonies, and the bass line, chills up and down. Paco Bell's Canon and D for violin with the Focal Stelia sounds insanely gorgeous, with the vibrancy of the strings creating an energy I could almost see. This is a melody that will almost always move me to tears, even just listening to it on my phone. With the Stelia paired with the Lena, I was too mesmerized for tears. Now, I did most of my listening without engaging DCS Expanse or any of the filters. I'm simple like that. But I did play around a little so that I could offer my impressions. 
First off, Expanse. The first thing I noticed when I engaged Expanse was a significant gain drop. I felt like the volume was halved when I turned Expanse on. DCS subsequently explained that this will only be noticeable when using the 6 volt output on the DAC, which I was using. Indeed, on the 2 volt setting, there was no decrease in gain when I used Expanse. Now, DCS does say that Expanse isn't suitable for all types of music. They actually have a couple of title playlists with music for testing Expanse. I listened to White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane with E1 and then E2 engaged, and I did not notice too much of a difference. That doesn't mean there wasn't any, it just means that my ears didn't discern it. But just for fun though, I listened to that song with the same headphones on a different system later on for comparison, and I realized that it sounded more dimensional in general on the Lena. Next, I tested the PCM filters. You can select between two processing options when receiving PCM data. DCS explains that filter one has the best rejection of unwanted Nyquist images with the sharpest roll off, but poor transient response. Put another way, DCS says, there will be more energy available for the stuff we want to hear with this filter. Filter two, meanwhile, has more relaxed image rejection and better transient response. They recommend filter two for orchestral music. Honestly, sometimes I liked filter one and sometimes I liked filter two. I can't exactly articulate it. And DCS even says the effects are subtle and that it's tricky to speak in terms of tonal differences you would hear as opposed to differences you might sense. So play around, see what you like. If you feel more engaged in the music and less fatigued, then that's the way to go. There's also an MQA filter for MQA audio files as well as four DSD filters. The DSD filter is active when you are playing DSD files or upsampling PCM data to DSD. Speaking of upsampling, you will see mention of a DXD upsampling option. DXD is just high rate PCM. Now you know. Now, don't forget about audio cables with your Lena stack. At Moon Audio, we custom build all of the cables you need from the very best materials. I opted to use our top of the line Silver Dragon interconnects network cable and digital cables, along with our top of the line Black Dragon power cables. Head on over to moon-audio.com to learn more about Dragon audio cables. You can also peruse our collection of hi-fi headphones. Feel free to reach out to us if you need help choosing a pair to go with your Lena. Now, if you're wondering about a comparable desktop setup with a headphone amp and DAC minus the clock in this general price range, you could look at the Chord Dave DAC preamp amp with the Chord M scaler. We love Chord, their DACs are phenomenal. A big difference between Chord and DCS is that Chord's products are not firmware upgradable. And as we talked about before, that is a really great benefit with DCS. So there you have it, the DCS Lena. They say that good things come in threes and the Lena is proof. Moon Audio's Drew Baird had his mind blown by the Lena, and I'm right there with him. Here's the thing, DCS put a lot into the Lena, but sometimes it's what you don't put in. They didn't add coloration to the headphone amp. Sometimes it's what you take out. They eliminated a lot of distortion with their ring DAC technology. You get what I'm saying. The sound is simply stunning. This is a reference system to end all reference systems. The clarity and transparency are out of this world. The Lena really just gets out of the way and allows your headphones and your music to shine. Our written review linked below has tons of information on the Lena. And stay tuned for Drew's part two video on the Lena. If you have any questions, leave us a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching.